Hello, this is Charlene Carla. Welcome to NASA. This is my Narcissistic Abuse Survivor Autobiography, where I share my testimony to help you along your healing journey. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, you see I have on a hot fire chosen shirt, okay? Many are called, but few are chosen. So remember, a mm, long time ago, a few uh, videos ago, I mentioned how, you know, if Jezebel's after you, sending a narcissist into your life, it's probably because you're chosen, okay? And the enemy is afraid of you, so he's trying to distract you, he's trying to interrupt you, he's trying to make you think that you're not chosen, he's trying to make you think you don't have a calling, a purpose, you know, a divine destiny. So today we are going to be talking about that deception, okay? We're going to be talking about wolves in sheep's clothing. Hmm. Okay. I have to pray. I'm sharing my prayer tips with you guys. I pray, Lord... Do not let the serpent beguile me. Do not let the devil deceive me. Do not let me be ignorant of Satan's devices. Okay, the scripture there says we, we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. There's a scripture that says even the very elect, <laughs> the chosen, may be deceived. Okay, so how many of you guys? Seen that movie devil's advocate okay old movie i love old movies it's a really good movie keanu reeves um al pacino i think charlie's theron really good movie devil's advocate okay and you may learn some stuff about the bible in there okay but they actually mentioned one of these scriptures that we're going to that we're gonna to talk about today they actually mentioned the scripture in that movie because it was literally about the devil okay not not extra demonic demonic gory crazy scary but it is a horror film okay but so we're gonna actually read two scriptures today ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna give you double i think i told you what my favorite scripture is um isaiah 61 and 7 for your shame you should have double i'm gonna give you double today so First scripture, we're going to be in Matthew. Both these scriptures are in Matthew. First scripture is in chapter 7, verse 15. It's in red. Jesus is talking to us, okay? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He didn't just say, oh, the wolves. He said ravening. Okay, that, I have to Google that like that. You can Google, okay, ravening wolves, all right? Beware, Jesus is saying, okay? Second scripture, same book, Matthew chapter seven, sorry, chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is in red too. This is Jesus talking to us. Okay, he's letting you know. Okay, I'm sending you because you're called, because you're chosen. I'm sending you. It's a great commission. Go ye out into the whole earth. Okay, preach the gospel. Jesus is saying, I'm sending you in the midst, in the midst of wolves. But they look like sheep, okay? They, they look like sheep, you know? I think Jesus said he's, he's the good shepherd, okay? He's the good shepherd. We are his sheep. He said, my sheep know my voice, okay? But there's some little lambs, little, Mary had a little lamb out there. There's some sheep out there that aren't really sheep. They're 
ravening wolves, okay? Oh my goodness, again, remember? <laughs> Narcissists are pathological liars, remember? So they're trying to deceive us. So today, I'm gonna talk about number two. Number, this for number one, two, three. I'm gonna talk about number two today, okay? Just gonna call him number two. Just, just gonna call him number two. Um, this was the dude that the enemy, no, not God, God did not make us, you know, did not make the twain one. He, God did not join us together, okay? So again, remember, it was easy for man to put us under. Um, but the enemy brought absolutely number two into my life right in between me and God. Remember, this is when I was coming out of religion and into relationship. And this story, <laughs> it's so long. I may have to do a part B. I may have to do a part two for number two because it was so much. I started, you know, thinking about it, writing down notes, and I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All this stuff I forget put out of my brain cells. But he absolutely <laughs> was a wolf in sheep's clothing. His member. He's in the church. He's a PK. Remember, his father's a reverend. He's in the church. He's singing in the choir. So he's coming to me as a Christian man who loves the Lord, who's singing praise and worship to God, like I said, like a little angel. He deceived me, and again, I believed it, and again, it worked. And because I was chosen, Jezebel, just here's some love bombing, here's some hoovering, here's that cycle of abuse. And I was, again, remember, three years and I was out. Okay? God, thank you, God, does not let me suffer, or I won't allow myself to suffer beyond that. Okay? Like, no, three is my number. I, yeah. But they're coming to us, they're pretending. So this is for all of you guys out there. How many of you guys? Narcissists in your life, they got you. Because hmm, they came to you as, I'm a Christian. I attend church every Sunday. I'm in the choir. I'm on the prayer team. I love the Lord. Number two, actually wrote a song called, I Love the Lord, <laughs> okay? While he's doing all this demonic stuff to me and to everybody else in his world. Now, number two, he was my number two. I was his number three. Possibly, ding, 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 red flag, orange flag, possibly. I was number three, okay, for him. He's actually on number four now, <laughs> by the way. Um, and I was number three, but so he came to me like, oh, you know, wife number one and wife number two, they did this to me, they did that to me, they cheated on me, they, did, they didn't want to work. So what am I saying? What are we saying, our little our empathic people? Oh, you poor baby. I would never do that to you, remember? I'm not, I'm not a cheater. And I've been working since I was 16, okay? So, but he comes to me like that. And so, oh boy, this too. We met, I told you guys how we met, you know, at a friend's house and pull me in with the singing on the piano like a little angel and so i even though this was a thousand years ago i feel like after knowing him only for two weeks and we weren't even dating dating because yeah he had a car i had a car i had my own place he was living in somebody's place but he pretended 
because he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Pretended like he had a roommate, like it was just a roommate situation. He didn't say, I'm a deadbeat and so I'm living with a friend of mine. He didn't tell me that because <laughs> I'm chosen. So, so yes, yeah, a lie. Okay. So, after two weeks of knowing this dude, he moves in with me. He, he's like, this is what he said. <laughs> he was like, um, yeah, so um, I have to leave the place where I'm at. So I have to move in with you. That, it wasn't a, yo, babe, sweetie, this is my situation. And I, I hate to ask you, but is there any way possibly you could think that I could stay with you for just temporarily? It wasn't like, you know... Uh, he didn't come to me like that. He came to me like, I gotta go, I gotta move out. So make some space in your closet, basically, right? But what do we do? What do I do? Sure, sweetie, come on in. <laughs> Interrupt my life. Interfere with my relationship with God. C come on in, distract me. C Cause you're a wolf. And she's going, that's what happened. Because again, he, he was not forthright with me. <laughs> again, about his living situation. So, but I remember kind of like thinking, oh, sure, okay, c c come on in. But I, but I still let him in. How many of you guys, you let him in? Met <laughs> horror films about vampires and stuff, you have to invite them into your house. <laughs> the bat doesn't just fly into your house uninvited. You have to say, come on in, Mr. Vampire. Then they can come in and wreak havoc. Remember I told you, open doors, sin, open doors. That's what lets these narcissists into our lives, okay? So remember, marriage is an idol to me. I'm worshiping marriage like an Asherah pole. I just want to be loved. I just want to be married. I remember before this, I'm at the club every weekend looking for my next husband. So enemy knows that. Remember, the enemy knows what we want. He knows what we like. Uh, again, careful what you pray for out loud. Because I remember one time I said, must have said out loud that I want this when probably right before I met him, or maybe after I met him and right before we really got serious. But I said, um, you know, I want my next husband, I want him to see me worshiping God in the sanctuary. I want him to, to that's how I want him to, to find me. You know, or the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, ladies. <laughs> All single ladies, we're not supposed to be finding these dudes, our husband. They're supposed to find us. We're supposed to be like like Rebecca and Rachel and even Moses' wife. We're supposed to be about our father's business, physically, literally, doing what God says, focusing on our kingdom assignments. That's how they're supposed to find us, okay? So... That's, so, but I prayed that out loud. Lord, I want my husband to find me worshiping you. So, hmm, what does the little wolf do? Because remember, monitoring spirits. Little stenographers taking notes. So the little monitoring spirit went and told him, hey, this is what she wants, okay? So he comes to me and he's like, oh, I saw you worshiping, you know, in church the other day and you were raising your hands about, He got me. He, it, it worked. Because I'm thinking he's a sheep. But he's really a ravening wolf. Hmm. Little PK. Okay? I remember one time after he moves in. Because again, I'm just like, oh, you poor baby. Come on in. Interrupt my life. Remember, I'm a single mom. Okay? Dude, he could have been. He wasn't. Thank God. He had three daughters of his own. He could have been like a pedophile or something. He could have been a rapist or something. I didn't know that. And I'm inviting him into my house with my 
beautiful little daughter. Please be careful. Ladies, when you have children, especially even brothers out there, these narcissistic chicks are little fruitcakes too, okay? Watch your kids, okay? Thank God, again, that, that was not an issue with him. But uh, I remember one time I came home from work um, and I was like, oh, I'm so tired, I have a headache. And he was like, oh. put his hand on my head and just starts to pray. And all I'm thinking again in my carnal mind is, oh, this man of God is praying for me. Oh, he was a rabbiting wolf, okay? So, we're together. What are we doing? Because we're living together. We're, we're sinning. Remember, we're, we're sinning. Um, again, d this is still... Oh, no, okay. The 12 years a slave was after him. But I still was not having intercourse at this time. I had already shut my legs, okay? Now the glue shut. Super glue. Gorilla glue, okay? So, but at that time, I, you know, right before him, I was still kind of like dibbling and dabbling. Again, I'm never, never foot in the world and one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom. Um, at church every Sunday and literally, basically just to repent for what I did Monday through Saturday. Okay. So we're in the same bed. We're taking showers together. We're living together, but we're not having intercourse, but we're doing other stuff. Remember, okay, and get this. Don't, don't try this at all. Okay, everything that I tell you, especially the bad stuff that I do when I'm telling on myself, I'm not just telling on myself so the accuser, the brethren, can't go back and run to Abba Father and tell him what I've done. I'm telling you so you don't do it. Cause I don't want, I don't want you to be deceived. I, I, I want your eyes open. Okay, when these these wolves come to you and pretend like I am just a little man, little man, little man, but they're really a ravening wolf. Okay, so similar, I think similar cookie monster, maybe even actually the same height. Okay, anyways, and so just like cookie monster with the sinning part, you know, crazy stuff was happening now, he was not having episodes but just strange things were happening to him and but i would be thinking okay maybe this is his punishment because we're sending now i'm not being punished that i know of i don't know that i am i really am but i'm thinking you know how we do we sit in we balling out of control and forgetting that you will reap what you sow. So I'm pretending like I'm not sowing sins, okay? But I am. But when we would do our little sinful acts, he would be punished, like physically punished. We, I used to joke that he like gave me a tour of the Florida hospitals, okay? Because I, he was the first guy that I had to ever call 911 on. Not like Cookie Monster. Not because I was afraid for my life, not because he was threatening me. Because he would be like, oh my gosh, I have this horrible pain in my side. Oh my goodness, my migraine. He had migraines. I mean, that that gave him nosebleeds, that made him nauseous. That He would be jacked up. and But I would just be sitting back like, you know, <laughs> like with a cross around my neck, like, oh, it's because you're sinning. But... <laughs> Even though I am, I'm straight. <laughs> okay, it was really weird, but that's what I'm thinking. And again, God, oh my, please, again. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God, which includes element of salvation, mind of Christ. All right. So, yeah, he would be punished, okay? Again, didn't stop us, all right, from our little sinful seeds that we were sowing. So, um, remember, I told you about our wedding. Wedding was beautiful. Wedding was gorgeous. 
the marriage was uh, um U G L Y. You ain't got no alibi. You ugly. Hey, hey, you. That was our marriage. It was ugly, ugly. It was ugly. In 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 like complete contrast to the wedding. Um, and what's crazy is that watching the wedding video and remember I told you I was messed up when we were together apart, together apart, together apart. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about why there was boomerang stuff going on in our marriage. Um, so one of the times we were not together and I was not healthy in my brain because remember they're meeting us were unhealed empaths my inner child is still in me crying like i still want love i still want love i'm thinking marriage is going to give me love marriage is going to uh uh cool down my lust i need to tell you a story about our first anniversary that if you think remember i said with him i really i got married because it was fire i was burning okay i was saying better to marry than to burn I, I was burning in my flesh so i'm like i need to get married i need to get married Okay, but yeah, didn't work. So I need to tell you that story about our first anniversary. So one of the times we're not together, I'm watching. This was so unhealthy. Please don't do this. Rumination. I spent an entire summer watching our wedding video. Every day. Every day, not not once a week, not once a month, every day for an entire summer. Um, I think I told you I should ship my daughter off to California to be with her dad every summer, right? So I'd be alone. That's when I really would go crazy with the sin and stuff. Um, so I'm alone in this house. Um, and um, but I, yeah, I'm gonna have to do a part B because there's so much to tell about this little three years. But when you're you marry somebody that you think is a sheep but they're really a ravening wolf it's a lot to tell so i spent an entire summer watching this video it was torture don't ask me why i'm doing it it's torture right but i'm watching it and all of a sudden it clicks in my brain that you can see like in the natural and in the spirit, the separation between me and him. As soon as we got married, like remember, he sang beautiful songs that I do. Everybody's crying. Beautiful wedding. Get to the reception, and you you don't see us together. Is didn't I read that scripture about the the twain becoming one? We did not look like we were one at the reception. After, you know, the, the, the first dance and aside from the cutting the cake and doing the garter and all that stuff, you didn't see us together in that video, okay? I'm sure that video's in the garbage somewhere, in a pile somewhere, a landfill. Um, you, you were not together. There's like 85 minutes of him dancing. By himself you know because again remember i told you how that that microphone was like that was his thing that was it's like satan puffed up because of his gift so he's dancing and singing and i'm not even on camera people it's my wedding day i'm not even on camera okay so i could see all of a sudden one day i was just like oh my goodness we're we're not together and it's documented on this videotape. Sad, okay? So, go over here to the first anniversary. Like I said, I hmm. was doing all my little sin and stuff before I got to him. Before we met, I'm burning, so I'm really trying to get married. Like, extra, extra. And I'm thinking that's going to cure the spirit of lust that's burning like little flames like you see on my shirt okay i'm thinking that 
It did not. Just FYI. Any y'all church people out there trying to get married, trying to, you know, ignore all these red flags because you're burning and you're just like, I just need to get married. And as soon as I get married, I won't be sitting anymore. I'm a living witness. It's not true. Oh my goodness. Our first anniversary. Go away for the weekend. I don't know where. Disney probably because I love Disney. And um, I just happened. Sorry to... Mm, get too graphic but i just happened to be you know that just happened to be the time time of you know my monthly visitor from aunt flo okay ladies know what i mean during our anniversary and i'm just like oh heck no we about to do something i don't care you know i just read <laughs> no that's the bit the book of leviticus there's like rules a bunch of rules a gazillion rules that god had given children of israel you know after they left egypt um so before jesus before jesus became our you know blood sacrifice to wash away our sins so but there's a there's a rule a law a law of moses that says you're not supposed to have sex with a chick who's you know whose aunt Flo is visiting okay it's in the bible look at that people my people perish for lack of knowledge look it up okay I, 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 I assume I did not know that scripture at the time. So I'm like, hey, we about to do something. I don't care. This is our anniversary. I, but I was burning with lust so much so. And he wasn't because he was just whatever. Because um, remember, they, they get you with the, oh, I'm loving, I'm affectionate, I'm this and this and that. And then you get married and it's, right? So he went to sleep. But I'm still hot in the pants, <laughs> even though I'm chilling with on flow. So I, I, I put on, like, I'm not going to say pornography, but like Cinemax after dark, okay? To, to feed my lust. Lust is a monster, people. Anything you do, any sin you commit with your own body, oh, that's the hardest stuff to be delivered from. It is the, oh my God goodness i'm probably gonna have to write a book about it about the the, the flesh the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh this the pride of life like that's some hard stuff to get rid of so <laughs> please don't get married just because you're burning because that spirit of lust will not just dissipate it's not just going to evaporate because you get married just fyi okay so now I think I mentioned that the issue really why number one and number two ended those marriages was finances, right? So now I'm going to tell you that, you know, number two is telling me, oh, wife number one didn't want to work and wife number two didn't want to work and blah, blah, blah. So what does he do by the time he gets to me? Now, all of a sudden, Mr. Soloist in the choir doesn't want to work. Um, he literally got fired from so many jobs that towards the end of the relationship, he would come home and be like, hey, babe, um, yeah, I got fired again. I was just like... Oh, for real? Okay, so what do you want for dinner? Like, that... I became immune to it. How many of you guys become immune uh -uh. to these narcissistic things and issues? Them not wanting to work and them not wanting to give you that love and attention and affection that they did in the beginning. And the, we, we settle. We take it, we again, we sit in that quicksand and just sit in that cauldron and just, oh, this is my life. Husband doesn't want to work. Wife doesn't want to cook me dinner. This is, that, that's not God's best, you guys. That is not God's best for you. <laughs> You're chosen. 
Okay, royal priesthood, peculiar people, holy nation, remember? <laughs> your kings, your queens, your priests unto our God, okay? It's what Jesus said. Don't settle. Don't just sit there and take it. If you're in that, <laughs> you're in that pot right now. That narcissistic pot of goop. dog paddle your way to the top of that goo and, and cry out to God. Cry out to God. Just like when I just said, God, Jesus is the good shepherd. My sheep know my voice. Just like we know his voice. He knows our voice. Cry out to him. What did I say with Cookie Monster? I was crying every day. God heard my cries. He put them in a little bottle. It's a scripture. Put your tears in a little bottle. He, he remembers them. Why? Because them that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Don't let these ravening wolves that are in sheep's clothing, don't let them deceive you anymore. Ask God, Lord. <laughs> Is, it, is this a sheep or a wolf? God will tell you, okay? And when he tells you, leave, go. Exit stage left, left. Exit stage left, okay, go. All right, when you realize that. Again, I, I didn't realize, again, what I was dealing with. Um, can I... Thank God, that is horrible. Again, it's horrible. It was horrible. And it's painful as my life with Cookie Monster was. God opening my eyes to what I dealt with with Cookie Monster has opened my eyes to what I dealt with with everybody else. So now I can look back on number two and number one, Mr. Baby Daddy, and say, oh, <laughs> explains so much. I think I told you guys already how number two would lie to me. Holy Spirit would tell me. We would literally just be sitting on the couch, chilling, watching TV. The Holy Spirit would say, check his phone. Now, I don't, now, I'm not cheating. And I'm not one of those, let me see your phone. And I'm not going through your phone. And I'm not checking your collars for, uh, you know, lipstick stains. And I'm not going through your wallet to make sure you didn't get a phone number. I'm not doing any of that. Because if you're dumb enough to cheat on me, <laughs> Ms. Chosen, God knows. Remember, God sees everything. He hears you. You in trouble. All right. So whatever. So I didn't ever do that with him. I didn't ever, you know, I, I'm not jealous. I'm not a jealous person and a, I'm not, okay? So even though, hmm, many of you guys, these narcissists, they kind of, they almost want to, they want you to be jealous because they're doing all this stuff kind of like in your face. Cut over here for one second. Cookie Monster. One time we went out to dinner with his family, okay? His brothers and sisters. And we go outside, everybody's about to leave, and everybody's out just out there chit-chatting. This brother is out there looking at chicks. He, <laughs> this is how bad it was. Some chick came out the door, and he like, did, I can't even, he did a 360 to look at this woman turned around in a circle. I'm his wife. I'm standing right next to him. His brothers and sisters are standing right next to him. He couldn't help it. Those demons are like, we want to look at this chick. We want to look at that chick. Couldn't control himself, okay? So they, they, they do this stuff in front of you, all right? And remember the beautiful hey beautiful hey beautiful on the ig crap that mr cookie monster used to do so we know again we know this stuff and we're ignoring it because our inner man is so so hurt 
and so unhealed, so I understand. I get it. I know why you're still with the narcissist. I know how they reeled you in. I know how you fell for the, 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 the wolf in the sheep's clothing. I understand. But when you ask God, God, show me what's going on. God, tell me what's going on. He will, again, reveal everything that's in the darkness. He will reveal it, right? So, again, we're sitting on the couch. Holy Spirit's like, check his phone. So, I'd be like, oh. And I think this happened like two or three times. So, he really <laughs> should have like some deleted stuff after the first time. So, hey, um, can I see your phone? Like, casual. I didn't say the Holy Spirit told me to check your phone. Calm down, people. Okay, don't don't tell the narcissist everything. All right. So I just hey, oh, can I see your phone? Remember, and I'm like, oh, who's Heather? It's the only name I remember. Who's Heather? And what what area code is this? Cause this is not <laughs> Florida area code. Oh, that's my cousin. That's my this. That's my homegirl. That's my dad. But oh, mmm. This, this conversation doesn't sound like your cousin, okay? And I have to tell you this one funny, super duper funny, quick thing. And then I think I may, may have to do a part B just because I really, really am trying to drive home this message of do not be deceived. And if you're like me and you were already deceived, but you're still in it. Pray for the truth. Jesus. Hmm. Wait, the truth and the life. Pray for the truth. And then don't just say, oh, I know the truth. I know he's cheating. I know she's lying about X, Y, and Z. I know my mother is lying about who my father is. I know my father is lying about, you know, my mother, why she left me and my sister. Like, once you find out, don't you do something. <laughs> Faith without works is dead. Do something, okay? Ask, even if doing something is just asking, God, give me the strategy to leave, okay? So, but I stayed. But this one time, not only was he texting other chicks, he was online. <laughs> it's a PK. He's at church every Sunday. Main soloist in the choir at this mega church that we're going to together. But he's online on certain websites that I cannot reveal on YouTube. Okay? And he's talking to chicks. Okay? And looking at chicks. Okay? And the reason I found out is because all of a sudden there were these charges on my phone bill. And I remember <laughs> a lot of stuff that I actually remember about number two. I remember this because I was on the phone with Bell South for like an hour and a half arguing <laughs> over these charges. Like I, I feel like it said that I called like Guyana or something, like some Caribbean country, not even Dominica, some Caribbean island. And it had all these, you call Guyana five times. And I'm like, no, I did not. <laughs> and it took me about three people to get to the top like the manager because these people the customer service people are telling me you direct dialed this number to somebody in this other country and i'm like no i didn't okay finally get to a manager see how much stress we go through with these narcissists finally get to a manager and a manager simply says because at some point god's gonna reveal the truth the manager says you need to check the history on your computer. Not your phone, your computer. And this was like home phone bill, okay? And I'm like, well, what? 
My computer? What? What are you? You're your 10 agents before you just told me that I directly dialed this number on my home phone. And now you're telling me, check my computer? Are you kidding me? And he was just, you need to check the history on your computer. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And when I did, I'm gonna end with the story because it's super crazy. When I did one day, I was like, okay, let me, probably that same day I got off the phone with Bell Cell. Let me check the history on my computer. Now, I, I'm not an IT whiz. I don't, I don't know how to create HTML code. Okay, I, I don't know anything about, you know, this is, I way before I'm, you know, tech savvy, you know, with apps and internet stuff, right? But I promise you, <laughs> the Holy Spirit takes care of the chosen people, okay? Promise you, Holy Spirit was like, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here. And so I'm just, I, right, to me, it's random clicking here and clicking here and clicking this and, but it's Holy Spirit, like, do, 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 like the Holy Spirit is like, has the cursor, has the mouse in his hand. And I was able to get into number two's account on this one particular website. I wasn't Christian at all. And I, I got into the man's inbox. I didn't have his password, his username, no, none of that. Holy Spirit was just like, click, 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 here you go. Behold. <laughs> Here's the truth. And so I see this message that he typed to this chick, some chick in Texas, I think. I don't know. And this is the funniest part. I'm ending with this story. For part A of number two, um, the message that he typed to this young lady was so eloquently written, so error-free, so grammatically correct, that I was thinking to myself, my husband didn't write this. My husband, my little baby sheep, a cute little lamb that I thought was a lamb that's really a wolf. I'm like, he didn't write this. Because if he actually sat down and wrote this, there would be misspellings. There would be missing punctuation. There, Cause he doesn't sound like this. It wasn't his voice. I, my sheep know my voice. It, that was not my husband's voice. So you, you know what I did? I'm thinking, oh, oh, again, this poor baby. He is, you know, must be oppressed by Satan. He, he, there must be some demons in him making him do this. Because he could not have written. <laughs> this paragraph so so beautifully um and yeah made an excuse like oh it's just the demons in him mm, poor baby no big deal it's kind of like what i did with cookie monster knowing oh my goodness knowing there's demonic stuff happening with the black eyes <laughs> didn't number two didn't see black eyes but Still, I know something's in you, church boy. Something's in you making you act a fool like this. And so that day, because I don't play, if I, if all of a sudden I figure out that two plus two is really four, I'm going to show you my calculator and say, explain this. Because you kept telling me that two plus two was five. Explain this. So I call him out on it. I think he's, he's at work. One of the time, one of his jobs <laughs> that he lost. He's at work out. I remember, man, he worked for so many places. I don't remember what he was doing, but he was like out in a field somewhere, somewhere outdoors working. And so I texted him like, um, 
So I saw this stuff on our computer. I saw what you wrote to little Susie Q. What's going on? You know what happened to him that day? And I think he probably, I think, remember I told you, he was the one saying, oh, are you in the FBI now? So I think that's when he used the, are you in the FBI crap, right? Because they like to do that, you know, that projecting. Well, you, what are you, you you're calling me a, a, a liar? You're, you're accusing me of cheating? You must be cheating. Why are you looking at myself? So I think he did that, right? But later on that day, probably like within hours, maybe within one hour, because I called him out on this truth. You know what happened? This dude got bit by a snake. The same day that I realized he's a snake. He got bit by a snake. And then what is he doing? Oh, oh baby, I just got bit by a snake. Oh. My first thought was, hmm, did you just get bit by the serpent that you're working for now? Is that, is that what just happened? So again, he would, I saw his punishments like, and they were there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Video number two and prayerfully, I'll be done after that. But so much happened. But again, because he's gifted, he's talented, he, again, he's singing like an angel, but the anointing is not there because he has not submitted fully to Christ. You're working for the devil, but you have a gift from God. So it's not, not, not going to be wonderful for you, okay? It's not, life is not going to just go smoothly for you. Okay, when you're doing that, when, when, especially if you know you're called, you know you're chosen, you know you have an anointing, don't, don't waste it in the kingdom of darkness. Okay, that's why, that's why witches and fortune tellers and tarot card readers, that's why some of that stuff they tell you is true. But they got it from the wrong side. They got it from the dark side. They didn't get it from the Holy Ghost. Remember, no stenographers, they know stuff too. Okay, so do not be deceived. Do not let the devil deceive you. Do not let the serpent beguile you. Do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. If you think you got a sheep, you think you got a cute little baby, white, woolly lamb, but you see some ravenous wolf characteristics, don't ignore it and, and don't sit in that pot and continue to allow them to deceive you. When God shows you the truth, believe God. God's not, God is not a man that he should lie. God's not going to lie to you. God's not going to deceive you. He's not. He's not going to tempt you. He will test your faith. He does not tempt you to sin and all the other ridiculous things that we do. Okay? So... Part of our healing journey, remember, is the truth. Learning the truth, um, living the truth, walking in the truth, believing the truth, telling the truth. Remember, liar, liar video. Tell the truth to yourself. Do not lie to yourself. If you've got a wolf, then you've got a wolf. Ask God for a strategy to leave. But don't just sit there and try to glue little white cotton balls onto that wolf to try to make it look like a cute little baby lamb. It's not. Okay? Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, for liking and sharing this video. Thank you for being on my channel and for subscribing to my channel and hitting that little notification bell on my channel. Again, I really do love you guys. I'm bringing these messages to you. I'm telling you my testimony. So you, you can heal faster than I healed, okay? And that's so you will know the truth so that you, as the very elect, will not be deceived, okay? So again, if you need to contact me directly, take up thy sword. 
www.facebook.com. All my social media links are in the channel description. You guys be blessed and you be safe.